In today's video, Marina asks, how do you add a comparison of a metric over dates in a table in Google Data Studio? Meaning, uh, if you have a, a table and there's, you know, May of 2019 and June of 2019 for, say, a metric like clicks or sessions or goals, how do you get the difference of that in uh, Google Data Studio? Uh, the short answer is you can't. Um, the longer answer is that there are ways to hack around it, but they're a lot of work the the data studio community has actually asked google for this feature if you go into the google data studio uh, feature requests and bug tracker it has been uh upvoted on that board as a requested feature but it's not in the application now however um the question itself is an important question because there's a bigger issue at play any technique to engineer this sort of thing from calculated fields uh, to widgets to whatever the case may be actually violates um, best practices for data visualization in regular software and in things like web design and such like that there's sort of a a conceptual idea that there's a computation layer and then there's a presentation layer and presentation is what you see and is what data studio is really really good at presenting data really well data studio is not a computation engine uh, and trying to do computations within a visualization tool is kind is, is not a good fit um it's it's asking the tool to do things that it's not engineered for your general best practice regardless of the visualization tool you use google data studio tableau power bi whatever is that your data should have all the f information that you want to visualize already baked in it. So if there's a um, if there's a difference that you want to do, say like you know June 2019 data versus May 2019 data, those should actually be columns that you engineer in the data set in the data engineering section of wherever this data is coming from, and then that column is what you display in the visualization tool. So how do you do that? Well, if you're talking about data that's already kind of baked in, say like Google Analytics data or Google Ads data, you're going to have to have it make an intermediary stop point somewhere. So the way around this, for example, would be to take the data that you want to do the computation on, um, pull it into a database like Google's BigQuery because it connects natively to Data Studio do your computations with code in BigQuery, create an output table that has your computations. And then that is what you bring in as a data source into Google Data Studio. That's, that would be the best practice way. So that if you need to modify the computations, if you need to do all sorts of changes, or you want to run some uh, additional, more complex mathematical computations, that Data Studio doesn't support and it's built in calculated fields, you can do all of that in BigQuery, and then just bring in the results. So that's how you do it. Um, it is a lot more work to do it that way. And it requires a lot more technical expertise to do that because you need to know learn how to, to use Google's BigQuery. Um, and you also need to be able to write code that sits on top of BigQuery that can pull data in it and out of it process it and then push it back into it. So that's it's not the easiest thing in the world. And it does, in that aspect, sort of violate the spirit of Data Studio in the sense of it's supposed to be easy visualization of your data. But the best practices, presentation and computation should be separate. They need, they, they need to be kept separate so that people who are doing visualization aren't having to worry that they make a change to a chart or something, they blow up the computation, which is a, a very real possibility, um, depending on how, how you hack together various things. Um, so that's the recommendation there is you you do the computation elsewhere, and you bring the computation results into data studio. There are a number of really good tools that can do that processing. Um, but I would say big queries definitely should be your database of record and then use the programming language of your choice. Uh, PHP, R, Java, JavaScript, uh, Python, whatever to 
pull the data in and out of Google's BigQuery. And there are a number of libraries that are already set up that uh, can make connecting to BigQuery very, very easy. I use BigQuery for one of our uh, Trust Insights clients because it's it's a really, really good database. Um, the other added advantage of doing it that way, even though it's even though it, it is a lot more labor up front is once you have the data in BigQuery, you can do a lot more math on it. Um, you can start to do machine learning, you can start to do advanced statistics, you can do all sorts of stuff that you cannot do in Data Studio, period. Uh, it's just the capabilities are not there. Uh, and they won't be there because Data Studio is not a computation engine. Also, if you need to do specific exports of data from your data set, you again, you do that in the database, well, actually, you do that in the code that talks to the database. And and you you don't try and, and get data studio to do that either, because it's not an export engine either. It is a visualization tool. So by following the best practice, it's a lot more work up front, it will probably cost more to do it. But you get all of the benefits of a properly designed and governed system that you can analyze with, you can maintain more easily, that you don't have to worry about users blowing up by accident, and you can apply more sophisticated analysis techniques to later on. For example, Google BigQuery uh, is a cloud database. And so with uh, third party cloud connectors, you can connect it to things like IBM Watson Studio and do your uh, analysis uh, using you know, the most advanced machine learning techniques uh, available to you to forecast and predict like you know what's if you have all your monthly click data in, in google bigquery um you say okay what's going to be next month can i predict can i forecast can i do advanced analysis and guess what when you do that in data studio and when you do that in bigquery and and your computation language of choice you can push that data back into bigquery and then put it in data studio and say hey boss here's what we're forecasting for next month's clicks or sessions or goal completions or whatever it's, it's so again having that data separate and clean and well maintained opens up the door to enormous possibilities for what you can do with that information so good question marina i'm sorry that there's not an easy answer for your question because it sure would be nice if there was but follow the best practices of separating computation and visualization and you'll get the answer there'll be a lot of work up front You'll get the answer, and then you'll open the door to many, many more answers. As always, please leave comments in the comments below. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and the newsletter, and I'll talk to you soon. Want help solving your company's data analytics and digital marketing problems? Visit TrustInsights.ai today and let us know how we can help you.